Welcome to another edition of Cop Talk. I'm Larry Levin, and with me, the esteemed, the immeasurably esteemed Robert Cohn, our editor in chief emeritus, who in what year? 1969, July 1st. Looked just like this. I think they're the same glasses. I'm not sure. But anyway, there you have it. Well, actually, same that guy. Was, that was from 1961. 1961. Life. Student Life, Washington University. To Photogra what? Photographic proof that I one time had hair on the top of my head. It could have been doctored, Bob. <laughs> so one of our favorite uh, uh, fairly radical television commentators, Glenn Beck, is trying to stage a bipartisan gathering of American political figures in Israel to show solidarity in support of the Jewish state. So here's my question. Yes. How do you act as a divisive demagogue one moment and then just expect folks to fall in lockstep with you the next after you've spent most of your TV and radio time bashing them? The same question could be asked of Rush Limbaugh, who also has expressed very, very pro-Israel, especially pro-Netanyahu sentiments. Uh, in my class this morning on current events, one of my students spoke up and indicated that if she hadn't just been to Israel, she would go to Israel to be with Mr. Beck. Uh -huh. uh, and so there are some people for whom support of Israel, in and of itself, merits their support, even if they strongly disagree on other issues. There are others who say no matter how good Beck and Limbo might be on Israel, their other views are so far to the right of what most mainstream Jews in America feel that they should not be supported even for that reason. But my question, and I think that's valid, my question is this tactic to go there and stand under the Israeli flag and then act as though the people who choose not to be with you are somehow not as supportive of Israel as you are. Well, I think that's a totally inappropriate misuse of his power as a broadcaster. And even Fox News has decided to separate themselves from Mr. Beck, I think, fairly soon. Um, so now what everybody sadly is laughing about this week is Congressman Anthony Weiner. And he was, as we know, raised Jewish in the Park Slope neighborhood of New York. Um, so my question to you, and we've talked about this a little bit before, is when does a story about a politician or a public figure who happens to be Jewish become a story for Jewish journalists or publications? Well, you know, he is from Brooklyn. He has been regarded as one of the most staunchly pro-Israel uh, members of Congress. Uh, he is a, a, a good liberal Democrat. He, in his uh, speech announcing his resignation this very afternoon, he, he commended his parents for passing along Jewish values to him. He a little ironic Jew. that he brought that it's up. Kind of ironic. And, and Mother probably uh, was grimacing a little bit. No question about it. But, um, you know, there was an article in the Post-Dispatch about an individual who was accused of wrongdoing, and every other paragraph mentioned he was Jewish, he put on his yarmulke, he went to the deli. I think that can be overdone. But it is a fact about um, Mr. Weiner that he is, in fact, a member of the Jewish community and is part of the story. It isn't central to the story and shouldn't be emphasized each and every time he's mentioned, nor should it be totally ignored. So now Al-Qaeda has announced that uh, Ayman al-Zawahari uh, has become the new titular head of the terrorist group. Um, does having a new leader after the, the death of bin Laden mean anything for the nations of the world? It means that Al-Qaeda did not go out of business completely with the taking out of Osama bin Laden. Uh, however, uh, he has much less for lack of a better word, charisma and organizational ability in the opinion of those and the people who follow uh, in the entire... And there's been an in, in, in internecine split between the Egyptian branch of, of, uh, of the organization and the others, yes? Exactly. Plus, there was the killing of the leader of the al-Shabaab terrorist affiliate of al-Qaeda in Somalia and mm -hmm. uh, another uh, high-level terrorist person killed in Pakistan mm -hmm. and a very aggressive effort to kill terrorists in Yemen during the power vacuum there. Mm -hmm. So Al-Qaeda is kind of against the ropes, mm -hmm. and I think the Obama administration deserves praise for keeping the pressure on. I, uh, I brought with us today uh, uh, volume 44 of the St. Louis Jewish Light from 1991, 20 years ago. Wow. Robert A. Cohen, editor-in-chief, and just turned to the week of June 19th and thought we'd look at a little history. And the headline, the main story is, Mortgage Burning Brings Down House at B'nai Amunah's Tribute to Rabbi Bernard Lipnick. That's, it, ooh, it gave me kind of a shiver up my spine because Rabbi Lipnick, who passed away, was truly one of the giants among many in our community. Uh, he resumed the rabbinate at B'nai Amunah after, 15 years after his retirement at the age of 80, when they were in between uh, Rabbis uh, Citrin 
and Rabbi Rose, mm -hmm. and he did a magnificent job, and he was absolutely indefatigable. He possessed one of the most beautiful voices of any rabbi in, in local Jewish history. And these, and these moments in your life, these are things you remember like the back of your hand, yes? I remember that better than what I had for breakfast today. <laughs> and, and we'll be talking a lot more about Jewish uh, history and St. Louis Jewish history with Bob in the months to come. That's all the time for we have today for Cop Talk. Till next time, this is Larry Levin with Bob Cohen saying, take it easy.